just a point I want to touch upon, inclusive ownership and integrating of small-scale farmers into market systems. You gave great examples yesterday, such as um, Tanga Fresh, I think it was, and more of an agroecological approach, that's what you actually said. Um, Dar's an uh, example that I'm familiar with, but how do you really see this being a long-term and sustainable model, especially in the light of large retail corporates sort of encroaching on the horizon? Yeah, I think what I was talking about yesterday and sharing from the practical examples and research that I'm doing, especially on Dar es Salaam, was that there, there are existing food systems that are very inclusive. They involve a wide range of actors and they are delivering food, in this case to feed a city of more than 4 million people. The city is growing, but these systems are showing the ability to respond, to, to change, to innovate. So I'm really encouraged from practical research that we're doing to find that there are these existing systems. And it's based on multiple actors who cooperate in all sorts of ways to bring food and I spoke yesterday about eggs, milk, also maize which of course is, is critical staple in Tanzania. So the systems are there, they are working and my argument is we need to understand and reinforce those and we have to be careful not to replace them. In terms of what you're saying about uh, supermarkets and so on, is interestingly, uh, some of the research, I mean, over just a bit more than two years now, I've looked at a range of uh, retailers, and uh, only one of them that I've been tracking over time now, especially looking at the egg supplies and the maize supplies, only one has collapsed and left. That was ShopRite, the biggest supermarket group in Africa, pulled out of Tanzania earlier this year. They've sold out to Nakomart. We'll see how Nakomart does. Uh, but clearly, ShopRite was struggling. Uh, the small shop near my house is carrying on, the market is carrying on, the bicycle deliveries and the woman even delivering eggs via public transport, she's still there, she's still working, ShopRite's gone. Okay, I mean, that's, that's a great example within there. And I mean, obviously for Tanzania, it's an uh, economy and a country that I'm very, very familiar with. However, do you actually think that this model, the sort of Swahili-based model, could be transferred to other African economies? And if so, where? Well, I've seen similar systems in other places. In Ethiopia, I've seen small farmers and through, the, again, these kind of networks of marketing processes, small traders, small retailers, small processes, that they are supplying Addis Ababa. I've seen it in Uganda. I've seen it in Zambia. I've seen it recently on a trip to Madagascar. So I think it does exist in other places. And in fact, in this conference, after the presentation, a number of people have spoken to me and a number of people have come up to me from different countries and said, oh, like that woman I spoke about in the maize market, you know, she could have been sitting in Malaysia. She could have been in my country. I can, I, they, people could, could recognize those characters that they see operating. I think the thing is that we, we, we are not looking at those enough. We are not valuing them enough. So in Dar es Salaam, people see a bicycle going past with eggs on it. And then maybe they see another one, but they don't take it very seriously. When, I, when we've gone in and we've actually looked at what is going on, we found that this is, in fact, the major egg supplier to the city. You know, we, on one road, and we found on that route alone, you know, close to a million eggs a week being brought by bicycle from small peri-urban farmers, many of them women, into the city. That's about six million US dollars of income to small peri-urban farmers coming by bicycle on that one route. So that's, that's serious business. That's an egg industry at scale, but built on multiple actors.